Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Devin O'Day. I'm Sylvia Ganyer. It's time for Devin's Table. And sometimes we cook, sometimes we talk about the table or anything about making home a home and bringing people in. And this is by request. We've had some questions and some, some requests for slow cooking. And it's the time of year. Keep it easy. Keep like your schedule going when yeah. you're trying to zoom around with all the new sports that are starting with kids and everything else. This is a great way to be on schedule to get supper on the table the right time. Comfort food extraordinaire. Ain't nothing that comes out of a crock pot, pot that is not called comfort food, right? Amen. And what are we going to make today? So I thought we would talk about just doing a braised beef stew. It's super easy, super hearty, and it stretches your budget. We love that. Well, stick around and we'll give you the how-tos coming up. Hi, I'm Brenda Fielder. At Mid-South Exteriors, our custom sunrooms bring the sunshine in without all the heat and the bugs. And they keep you warm all winter while you enjoy the outdoors all year round. They add real value because we build them like your house to match your house. Or let us save you energy by replacing your windows and old siding. And because we have no retail overhead, we come to you and sell direct to you for less. Call us at 833-8003 or visit us at MidSouthExteriors.com so when you're using your slow cooker, your crock pot, I remember my mother's original crock pot. Oh, yeah. I sure <laughs> wish I still had it, believe it or not. Really? Because there's just something about having that earthenware mm -hmm. flavor in those original crock pots. They were awesome. So if you've still got one and mm -hmm. it's still kicking, don't get rid of it. Yeah. Keep it. They don't make them like they used to anymore. So now they have new fancy fangled ones. And we're going to show you that because many of them have a low and a high setting and oh, yeah. you can pre-program in the times and all of that. So the most important thing to know is on the home setting, do you need it on the table fast or do you need it on the table more leisurely? You're going to let it go mm -hmm. all day. If it's all day, you're going to use your low setting. You need to speed it up. You're going to use your high setting. Gotcha. If you're using your high setting, you're going to need more liquid because it's going to cook harder, faster. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So you don't want it to sizzle down and then become <laughs> glue. <laughs> no, that is not no. fun when you have to take the chisel out to get what's in the crock pot out of it. That mm -hmm. is not fun. So if you're doing meat in with something, a lot of times I do one extra step and that extra step would be using either a skillet or a Dutch oven to brown the meat first. So if I was going to make this original, I would take that, that cast iron mm -hmm. enameled pot that I have there, put a little bit of oil in the bottom, maybe a little bit of flour yeah. if yeah, I yeah, want yeah. it to thicken up because flour is a thickener mm -hmm. just on the meat. And I would put it in for a minute and take it out for a minute. Super fast, super easy. And then I would layer that into my crock pot. With that, I'm gonna put in my aromatics. And my aromatics and my mirepoix, which is? Oh, that's carrots, celery, and onions. See, I gave you a visual cue. I didn't even do this to make yes. you see if you knew what you yes, were talking about. Yes, and So with your mirepoix, you can put that in. I generally put that uh, in the bottom and then I put the meat on top of that and I'm mm -hmm. gonna cover it with my braising liquid. If I have something, say I was doing a pot roast mm -hmm. or I was doing a shoulder or something like yeah. that and I wanted to use these flavors, but I didn't want it to sit down in there all the way because I'm going to go even lower and slower, not yeah. as much liquid, then I can cheat and I can use whole vegetables. Oh. Like I could take the tops off of these beautiful baby carrots that mm -hmm. we saw and put the carrots themselves whole, oh. smaller pieces, um, cut the onion into quarters and use it like a little riser yeah to put in the bottom of the crock pot and okay. then put my liquid in and then it will steam over everything to make a nice roast that is steamed more than braised inside mm -hmm. that liquid yeah and i love it. and when you braise it first in a in a in a uh, a skillet or something you get that nice brown coloring and you get that taste that's nice and brown yes you're going to sear in that flavor the yeah. same thing as steak on the grill you put it on the hottest part of the grill first and then you move it over to a little bit right. less on uh, intensity sort of mm. thing so for this what i would do is if i pretend i was going to brown my liquid uh my oil with my ground beef and then I would put in my aromatics. Devin, can you help me there with the carrots? I sure can. Put in maybe two good handfuls of carrots there. Okay. Okay. 
now, as my mama would say, I need farm girl handfuls. Okay. A little more. There you go. Perfect. And then since you're practicing, let's do some celery. Okay. There you go. Practice makes perfect. All right. And see, I was going to act like I liked you today. And I went ahead and cut these up so we wouldn't have to cry together. We wouldn't have to think of something sad. We're going to think of happy things, I making this things, beef stew. That's right. And we're going to put these in. So these are just done as half moons. You can dice them if you want to, however you want to do it. I'm going to put that in, just kind of layer it in there. And you see, just making a nice little uh, amount of stuff there. Okay. And then this mm. is our pretend we have browned this ground beef. We're going to put that in as well there, Devin. Go ahead and put it in. Go ahead and put it in. We're not going to make our, our viewers wait for me to brown it. We're just going to go ahead and put that in. Because it'll still brown. Oh, so, yeah, it'll yeah. brown. It just won't be as seared, if you will. Okay. If you are super ambitious and you want to make your own beef stock, mm -hmm. you can do that. You roast the bones. Yes. You take them out. And then you put them in with those same aromatics that we talked about, the celery, the onion, and the carrot, mm -hmm. some water, and let them cook low and slow until it is like super, super um, smelling wonderful in the air and the <sighs> liquid is reduced. So I have some beef stock here. What I would do is if I didn't want to use wine in mm -hmm. what I was cooking, I would use all beef stock. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I really like this Amber Falls wine for yeah. cooking. Yeah, the Cajun. Um, the Cajun. Best, yeah, because it's got some spice and kick to it. Yes, and so it brings a little green pepper flavor into what mm -hmm. we're doing. So I'm going to use half of this bottle uh -huh. in. Oh, that's not enough. Even a mm -hmm. half yet. We're going to put half in. Oh, and an extra splurge okay. just because we can. And the reason I use white onions, I, you see the red onion yeah, here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This can make the broth turn kind of gray looking. Red oh. onion, when you cook it, turns things kind of gray. So save this for your raw cooking. Yeah, not, it looks really good in a salad. Not so good when you cook no, it. No, not so good. Especially with mushrooms. It just turns grayish oh. brown and it's not fun. And then I'm going to finish putting in my liquid with my beef stock here. And I'm going to cover it. I'm not going to overflow it. I'm going to cover it. And then I'm going to use some aromatics. Oh my gosh. Your favorite. Bay leaf. Is that? Yeah, mm. bay leaf. And um, you can use fresh bay if you have your own mm. fresh bay tree. Not bay laurel. Different plant. Bay mm. leaf is different. And I really like bay with beef. So I'm going to put a handful in. And mm. also, we all have these. We buy a big thing of them and they right. sit in our cabinet a long time. Yeah. They're going to lose flavor over the course of time. So if it would normally put in two... It's been sitting there over six months. You probably put in four or five yeah. just to give you the flavor presence that you need. And you, you pull them out. Do you pull yours out? Yes. Before you serve Before or whatever because they're not fun to eat. No, you don't want to try to eat those. You always take those out. And we're doing a little Cajun. Don't ask me how I know. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. The first time, I was young. I didn't know what it was and I just mangeed down on, on a bay leaf. It was, went to somebody's house. That had, you know, Italian, they were cooking Italian food, had a bay leaf, and they go, You take that out, you take that out. I go, Now you tell me. So I'm just, for anybody who doesn't know, like me, I'm gonna tell you, take the bay leaf out, even after you cook. And if you forget or you miss one, and someone has it in their bowl and you see it, you go, ah, You're the lucky one at the table. Guess what? You get an extra serving of pie just because you found the bay leaf. You don't let them know that you forgot to take it out, right? Oh, or you missed yeah. one. You just you roll with the flow. That's the grade it. of hospitality. Um, since we're going Cajun style, a little thyme. Mm -hmm. This is just a dried thyme. You could put in thyme sprigs if you wanted to be able to pull that out. My stock already has salt in it. Okay. I'm not going to put salt or pepper in right now. Okay. I season at the end. It has a little bit in the stock. That's enough. And just for kicks and giggles, since we're going Cajun, Sage. a little bit of filet. Filet. Well, sassafras. Isn't yeah, it? Sassafras, mm -hmm. yes. So just a little bit. Sprinkle on top of the filet here. And you'll get that nuance and you'll say, hmm, what made that so good? So you've got uh -huh. uh, all those kind of Cajun flavors in there. I'm going to put the lid on this puppy and I'm going to let it go low and slow for eight hours. I'm going to pretend I had to go to work. I'm going to come back in eight hours and it's going to be ready to go. All I have to do is make some mashed potatoes, some really nice rice, serve it over top, nice bowl, family's fed, mm -hmm. one dish to do. 
Oh, Hallelujah. So good. This is an example of what you would do like Saturday night before you go to church. And then you get home and it's done. Yes. See, that's that perfect time period. This and you get home and the house smells like so good. Or you can put this all the way in the back and you have your guests and you come out and you have the flower all over you. So I've been <laughs> slaving all day. Oh. Hi everybody, Tommy Bryan. And here's something you can look forward to if you've ever wondered about how sports injuries are treated and perhaps prevention of sports injuries. Vanderbilt Wilson County is hosting a free, now that's free, sports seminar Saturday on the Lebanon High campus. It's going to be moved to the Blue Devil football indoor practice facility. That's an air conditioned facility. There'll be plenty of seating in there. It's located next to the tennis courts on the back side of the campus. Dr. Lance LeClaire, the team physician at Lebanon High School, who is a fine orthopedic surgeon. He's done some work on me before. And speaking of Dr. LeClaire, he's a guy who's got credentials just that you won't believe. He was a, well, he was in the United States Navy for several years. And during his tenure in the Navy as an orthopedic surgeon, he was the team doctor at the U.S. Naval Academy, Annapolis. He also served uh, some time as a team doctor with the Baltimore Orioles, the uh, Boston Red Sox, the Boston Bruins, uh, the New England Patriots, and during his time in active duty with the U.S. Navy, he worked on the West Coast out of San Diego, and he was the team physician for the U.S. Navy SEALs, and that's, that's pretty high cotton right there. Dr. Roy Terry, uh, Dr. Diamond, there'll be several professional uh, medical professionals there dealing with uh, injuries, uh, how they use the AED on the sideline and why there's always one there, why that tent is on the sideline to take the athletes inside where they can be examined in privacy as best you can at a football venue, um, heat-related injuries, uh, the, the way they triage injuries for uh, sports medicine during a game. All these questions will be answered. There'll be much, much more information available to you. And again, it's absolutely free. Saturday, July 29, Lebanon High School, Vanderbilt Sports Medicine is making this possible uh, at no cost. And then once again, it will be located inside the Blue Devil Football Indoor Practice Facility. For Main Street TV, I'm Tommy Bryan. Ain't nobody don't like pie. Pie, pie for everyone. And you got plenty at Green Door Gourmet. We sure do. We have all the fruit flavors of pie. Say that three times as fast. <laughs> fruit flavors of pie. Um, and we also have a wonderful Tennessee fudge pie. This is classic Tennessee right here from the Schrock family. But it is strawberry season here. And there is no better combination than strawberries and rhubarb when it comes down to a pie. Oh, wow. There is just that little essence of the tartness of the rhubarb when it's cooked down with truly naturally sweet strawberries. Mm -hmm. You don't have to put as much sugar if your strawberries are already ripened in the field. So you can do pies with a, a number of different things. Now these are all ones that have a double crust. Some pies that we have uh, on occasion are like a crumble crust, maybe like a blueberry or a raspberry. Sometimes we have cherry, which is a lattice work pie, mm -hmm. but these are the double crust pies or the open face pies. The reason this is an open face pie is because you want to look at it and eat every single thing that is in there. Look at all those chocolate chips. Look at every bit of those pecans in there. Mm. Every crust is homemade and <laughs> it's beautiful. The little delicate pictures of the strawberries that, that have been cut in, you've got the apple crusts that are made. They're little works of art that are edible works of art that are delicious. Oh, I love that. Your favorite place? Yes. What is it? Maters. That's what we say too. Or sometimes just maters. What about this fish plant food? That's what I was wondering. 
Is that just the phone message? And, and, and what I would I would do is people go with me. Uh, uh, 045-010-60. Now I'm gonna this might be taboo to ask, but is it organic or is it no but we have some organic stuff i would prefer organic just in case you know anything oh good i saw that one what we've got one of those in the cabinet right now right there yep Okay, we have one on a to to tomato blossom spray, so at home. What about neem oil? Oh, so that's not fertilizer. Got one. I don't know what happened to it. You hit me with it. Did you know that up to 80% of us will experience back or neck pain during our lifetime? Many of you are offered surgery or addictive pain pills to relieve your chronic pain. At the Dr. Gill's Center for Back, Neck, Chronic Pain Relief, we have been leading the way to better health, naturally, and have helped tens of thousands of people right here in Middle Tennessee for the past 30 years. I came to Dr. Gill about 10 years ago after my local doctors recommended surgery. I knew about Dr. Gill and wanted to see if he could help me. 10 years later, I am pain-free, no surgery, and no pain pills. Surgery is scary, and over 40% of all back surgeries fail, creating a cycle of surgery and pills. There is a safer solution to your chronic pain. Make the call to the Dr. Gill Center for Back Neck Chronic Pain Relief today and get your life back. This office visit is normally $299, but call today and receive your initial consultation report of finding for just $49. But hurry, this offer won't last long. Call 615-768-8743. That's 615-768-8743. What is going on with the rock barn on Nashville Pike? The Preservation Foundation of Sumner County recently announced plans for what many refer to as the Comer Barn, now being called Pilot Knob. It is a joint venture to create a space for learning, upskilling, or retooling trades and professional skills for students of all ages, at the same time preserving part of Sumner County's past. So this was the center um, of that racing industry. Andrew Jackson, his contemporaries, had uh, a lot of their horses here and bred them. The International Steeplechase was held here in 1929, again in 1930. Uh, they, they bought a lot of land. There's all sorts of horse farms around here. They bought up that land. They added a rail spur so that the elite of New York and even from across the pond were coming right here. I really believe that passion is the path to preservation. When I used to come home from college, and I would come down Gallatin Road because 386 wasn't here, and when I saw this barn with all the rolling land around it, I was almost home. And I always thought it was the most beautiful barn. It would be the most fabulous place for something special. Chase Moore and Becky Roy are sitting right there. They lead our CTE program. We're number one in the state of Tennessee with over 30 career paths. Every day they're finding new opportunities to connect kids to future workforce things. The greatest tragedy would be to see this barn fall in and we drive past it every day and know that we lack the will and the courage and the endurance to do something special. You can't see the sights without the sounds. From the crack of the bat to the roar of the crowd and everything in between, discover what Hit City has to offer. Spend your nights cheering on the Nashville sounds at First Horizon Park with giveaways fireworks shows, theme weekends, and more. Single game tickets are on sale now. Visit NashvilleSounds.com to claim your seat today. We're here today with some of our Mustang heroes. for at the 2022 World Championships of the Extreme Cowboy Race in Gun Road, Texas. And I'm very honored today to have Cindy and Maddie Branham with us. And they are riding the same Mustang this weekend 
who is drop dead gorgeous. I love it when y'all come out and we hear, mm. <laughs> So, Cindy, can you tell us briefly how you got involved with the Mustangs and uh, a little bit about well, in 2007, I was traveling around to expos as a clinician and a trainer and coming up kind of in the world doing that. And Mustangs really weren't my thing. And uh, a Mustang Heritage Foundation came out with the first extreme Mustang makeover. And I said, I can do that and get some national exposure. Long story short, a little black Mustang named Joshua found his way into my life and my heart and changed the path I've been on since. Uh, they really have become what I specialize in. They are my heart and uh, have become my daughter's heart. Um, so fast forward a few years and a few more makeovers and we had Mustang Million. And Patriot was the horse I got to pick out for that and he's a beautiful blue roan. That was absolutely, you know, that was just effortless guys. And she's still loping, not even breaking stride right there for Cindy on this beautiful blue roan pony right there. And then she is a master at the lead changes, always has been. Drops one behind. Get, let's see if she can get it on wall before she got it that time. You better believe it. All right, here comes the pedestal. Boy, the last few riders made it look good easy, but it's not. Doesn't matter which way you turn. Oh, and there's that step down, but she's right back on. She's right back on. Okay, not bad, not bad at all. He's fast, but he also, he's, his personality is just so cute. He'll go pick up cones and play tug of war with the other horses and like bring them to the kids. My mom's therapy. He just, he's such a fun little horse to ride and I love him. Yes. Mustangs start with us as being terrified. They're terrified because their instincts tell us, tell them that we could eat them. It's, they're out of their environment. They don't know what to do. And when they are trained properly, when they are gentle properly, they have heart change and all of a sudden they feel safe with the human that has introduced themselves to them. That safeness that they feel, that trust that is built in those first few moments is a change of heart and mind for them. So I really think it's almost like they relate to these kids. They don't take for granted relationship. They don't take for granted home. They, they look for that relationship. And so you have these kids who come into our program violent things, just just a lot of really hard times, and these kids are acting out behaviors, and the Mustangs just get them, and differently. So does my domesticated horses, but it really is different. They just sense it. Joshua, we know with Joshua which kid is hurting the most. He will literally like target them. He just senses it. He knows. Um, so that, it, it's, an, it's a phenomenal thing. Our program is called Mustang Redemptions, and it's because Mustangs have changed my life. They've been redeemed. We want to help people be redeemed through their mental health, through their struggles, through all of that. And our Mustangs play a tremendous role on Patriot. There's a huge role in that program. As the giant dinosaurs of Dynatrek leave the Nashville Zoo, make way for the Komodo Dragon. Yes, the dragons are coming. The dragons are coming. And right now, you can register to win a household membership to the Nashville Zoo. The easiest way to see these real-life giant lizards in real life. July 24th through August 13th, go to any Main Street Media of Tennessee website for any of our local papers. And your family might be on their way to a zoo membership. The dragons are here, and you can be too. Brought to you by the Nashville Zoo and Main Street Street Media Television. Dent South. Hi, I'm Brenda Fielder. When it comes to sunrooms and screen porches, we have more than 60 years experience helping Middle Tennesseans add value to their homes. At Mid-South Exteriors, we install all types of siding, from hardy board to all the new vinyl designs. We also do custom trim, gutters and downspouts. We even do roofing. And of course, energy efficient replacement windows. Our website is our showroom, so we come to you and sell direct to you for less. MidSouthExteriors.com Tired of hanging lights every year? We get it. That's why Southern Nights is here to help. We install programmable lighting on your home or business so you can enjoy beautiful, customizable lighting all year round. No more ladders, tangled lights, or cold nights outside. We do the work. You do the celebrating. Call Southern Nights today and take the hassle out of holiday lighting forever. For a free quote, give us a call at 931-241-3074 or visit our Facebook page at Southern Nights. 
Well, we have had quite the show, but the show is just getting started because I wanted to find out we have our Cajun slow cooker pot roast here. How do you serve it? And can you have stew without having potatoes? I'm Irish, so I don't think so, but... The great thing is when you're putting in those aromatics, mm -hmm. if you have some potatoes that are, say, about this size, yeah. which is a B size, yeah. so you have A, A, <laughs> B, C. Oh, okay. So you can take your B potatoes, leave this, make sure they're clean, leave the skin on, cut them into quarters. Mm -hmm. By leaving the skin, the potato doesn't fall apart as oh, much. And good. you can put those in at the same time you're putting the celery and everything else in, fine. You're like, I don't have potatoes like this. I've got some potatoes left over from when I was making potato salad or anything else. So you've got some potatoes that are just sitting in their little water bath in the fridge. Mm -hmm. I would put these in toward the end, like two okay. hours in, they don't cook into nothing. Or I would just, I would make mashed potatoes because I love mm -hmm. the gravy that this makes to go over top of mashed potatoes. Ooh, have a nice big, almost a flat bowl, put your, potatoes in the center and then make a little a, well a little well yes and put it all around. oh that's a great way to serve it dig a little deeper in the well right there mm -hmm. and you know the best hint for mashed potatoes Devin should what? I should I tell everybody my yes. secret tell us your secret so you wonderful cooks out there you all know to warm up your butter and your cream before you add it into your potatoes see I didn't know that warm up the butter and the cream do you need yeah. to melt the butter melt the butter in the cream and then put in a couple of tablespoons of cream cheese. Ooh. That will stop your potatoes from getting overly starchy and the water coming out in them. Oh yes! So oh, a I've seen little that. cream cheese. Little cream cheese. Do you need to warm that up a little bit? Put that in with your butter and your cream as it's melting and just use that. Put it in, pound them all up. I use the old fashioned uh, mm. um, potato ricer. Right. Yeah. Some people use a beater. Mm -hmm. uh, Hazel Daniels. She is the queen of using a beater to make mashed potatoes. She's awesome at it. Yeah. Charlie loved mm -hmm. the potatoes that way. Yeah. Um, but I'm an old-fashioned. i got to get all my frustrations out with the potatoes. <laughs> I love it. Well, I know that you can get all sorts of great recipes. And your slow cooker is your friend. If it's just, if you work hard every day, you can take it and start it in the morning when you get home at night, supper's cooked. And you really do stretch out. If you were cooking beef for everybody and you had to have servings for everybody, it might cost more. But this is a great way to make the money stretch. You guys, that's our show for today. Um, and remember, if you want to find a blessing, you got to first be, be one. one.